Okay, on top of my head is a New York Yankee set that my friend Berserkowitz got for me. And here we have Escape from New York on Blu-ray. Now, in Escape from New York, it says that by 1990, uh, it's 1988, the crime rate has like risen 400%. And by 1997, New York is like a maximum security prison and they roll off the whole island and the whole bit. And it says that uh, the Yankees, and there's, there's a song that's like, no more Yankees and whatnot. Well, here's something interesting. I actually was in New York in 1997, which might not be that much of an achievement because I'm actually from New Jersey, but nevertheless, go with it here. I was actually in New York in 1997 and I went to Yankee Stadium. So sometimes, you know, you see these movies and they get things right. In this case, uh, they got things wrong because there still was the Yankees in 1997 and I actually saw them play in 1997 and uh, I lost my brain fart. Yeah, brain fart. Uh, well, anyway, there was a there was a Yankees in 1997. Oh, New York was not a maximum security prison. Uh, still it, isn't. It's it still isn't. We're in the year 2020, which uh, everything else has gone wrong this year. But <laughs> New York is not, in fact, a um, maximum security prison. Now, year's not over yet. Yeah, year's not over yet. However, if you have not seen this movie, please do. Now, notice here that it says Escape from New York. Do not watch Escape from L.A. That is one of the most disappointing sequels I've ever seen. Because my mother didn't take me to see this when I was a kid. It came out when I was eight, and, and uh, I, I wanted to go see it. She said, I don't want to take you to that crap. So we didn't go. So years later, I'm an adult now. I'm living on my own. I'm like, okay, there's Escape from L.A. I can go see it. Snake Plissken on the big screen and Pam Greer's in it. I'm like, oh, this is from what? I love Pam Greer. So. Well, Escape from L.A. was one of the biggest cinematic disappointments ever. And I'm like, okay, but at least we got Pam Greer. Well, you know, Pam Greer's character had used to be a man, so it wasn't the Pam Greer sexy voice. She was like, Snake Plissken, I haven't seen you in years. I'm like, well, what the? I said, I, I get Pam Greer, but I, I'm not getting Pam Greer, you know. And so, when you when you're gonna get Pam Greer, you want to really get Pam Greer, um, you know. I mean, I, I would hope if you're watching Pam, I would love to get all of you. And so, you're, you're you, you know, you're still hot as far as I'm concerned. But uh, you know, getting off that uh, you know, off that uh, track. So anyway. But in review, New York is not a maximum <coughs> security prison. In the year 1997, I actually saw a Yankees game in Yankee Stadium. Uh, just my luck, by the way. They play the Mariners. There's a stadium tour visiting from Seattle. So my first time in old Yankee Stadium, and I'm surrounded by Mariners fans. That uh, they were, uh, you know, on a stadium tour. I guess they went to Baltimore and then New York, and then they're going out to uh, Shea Stadium, and then they're going, they're going up to Fenway Park. So uh, anyway, that's this my guy life. out here thinks he's really cool, and I think he only went out there to get in his car to move and put his top down so that the girl in the car next to him would think he was cool or something. You know that is, uh, I, I I can't say who for various reasons, but someone I have the misfortune of knowing once got in his car, put on sunglasses, rolled down the windows to back the car up, like three inches and was playing bad to the bone. I'm like, you're not bad to the bone, you're a fucking jerk off. Get in the car, do what you gotta do with it, and, and, and be done with it, but what, what is that? So, you know, that's another thing. Why I should say my wife has just sent me off on another uh, uh, little loop here. Yeah, this whole thing about revving the motor at the, at the light when there's another guy. Now he's talking to us, he probably can't see his cool guy friends and the line's moving and he didn't even move with it. Yeah, gee, that's real cool. But you, see, you gotta like, you see another car next to you. You gotta rev the motor at the light, and then when the light turns green, you, you gotta rev the motor and go off real fast. I used to laugh at people. They would do that. They rev the motor, room, 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 like they're all cool, and then they'd speed away, and they go up to the next light, and they miss the light. It turns red, and I'm sitting there right next to them or right behind them, without revving my motor and doing all that stupid shit. What, so you did all that macho dumb bullshit and what do you got? Nothing. Because when you get to the next light, you're still fucking sitting there and I'm sitting there reading right next to you or right behind you. And sometimes it would be funny 
the light would turn green, and they're so busy being macho and fucking around trying to be cool, they're not paying attention. The light turns green, they're fucking sitting there, and I'm just driving normal, and I'm on my fucking leg. I'm gone. So, you know what? Rather than trying to be a bunch of macho fucking dickheads, just fucking drive. Now, I guess, who am I to tell you what to do? You know who I am to tell you what to do? I am the Mahatma of Spring Garden Street, and I am now, since the king of... Uh, the uh, kid from Brooklyn who sadly passed away, I am the voice, the voice of the people. Be like cabbie, just draw. Yeah, but don't drive over those mines on the, be watch out for the mines on the 69th Street Bridge or 